So here's a hard question for you. I think it's a hard question. I don't know. How do you think about your role as a leader here in the United States mm -hmm. on issues around Asian Americans, Black Lives Matter, um, voting rights, all of that, and whether and how you can speak out about, for example, human rights abuses in China? It's a hard one, I know. You have to be specific on what human rights abuse you're talking about. Uh, because the China that I see, uh, the, the large number of the population, I'm talking about 80, 90 percent of the population, are very, very happy with the fact that their lives are improving every year. When I started at Alibaba in 1999, the GDP per capita was $800 in China. Today is over $10,000. And if you talk to a parent in, you know, in China and you ask them, are your children going to have a better life than you are? Right. Most of them will say, absolutely, yes. Uh, they're going to be educated. They're going to find good jobs. The economy is expanding. Right. So I, I like you to be more specific on that. Well, let me just ask you to in this way, though. <clears throat> there are a lot of American business leaders today that are being pushed by their employees, by consumers to say, look, we're taking a stand here on voting rights, for example, in the United States. Mm -hmm. You're also doing business in China. You should be consistent, right? Even Marco Rubio and others were actually criticizing American companies for what he was arguing was a hypocrisy. Um, and when you talk to a lot of American business leaders, they say, look, I, I can speak out here, but I know that I'm not in a position to speak out there because if I speak out there, it's not that my hand is going to get slapped. It's that my business is going to be uh, damaged by the government because I'm just not allowed to do it. Yeah, I think American company CEOs understand this very well, uh, which is different cultures have different values and mores. And uh, in China, you have different set of values. You also have a very different political system in that uh, one single party dominates the governance of the country, which, you know, whether you like it or not, uh, there are some great benefits, like China has dis managed to build a terrific infrastructure because there's no politicking around whether you should build a highway from point A to right. point B, right? So these are, these are all the benefits. And the, the bottom line is you have to look at the results. Are people happy? Uh, when I look at China, the average citizen is very hopeful about the future. Uh, they're happy about where they are. And... You know, I, I think that's but, really... But, but, you, but, you read, but you read the same headlines that I do about some of the human rights issues, no? I live in Hong Kong, right? So everybody is uh, worried. Uh, I, I still think it's kind of funny that people call me up, you know, on these big Zoom calls and say, Joe, where are you? And I say, I'm in Hong Kong. And they say, oh, are you OK? Right. Uh, well, over the last year, Hong, uh, they imposed the national security law. Hong Kong is one of the very few places that did not have a national security legislation in place. Uh, what is this for? It's against uh, uh, sedition. It's against uh, people that advocate splitting up Hong Kong as a separate country. Uh, these are things that are not allowed. You know why? Because Hong Kong used to be a colony. Um, you know, a few hundred years ago, uh, China lost Hong Kong to the Brits because of the opium war. The British want to sell opium into China. And, uh, uh, and as a result of uh, 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 some battles, uh, China had to give, carve up Hong Kong, gave it up. This is a very scarring kind of history of China, B having foreign powers come in and carve up your territories. Right. So, for, so if you put yourself in the Chinese people's mindset, you know, if you're a Chinese citizen, uh, I look at this history, I want to make sure that we prevent foreign powers uh, from carving up our territories. I think Hong Kong ought to be seen in that context. Uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of criticism of, uh, you know, the democratic freedoms or freedoms of speech is being suppressed. Mm -hmm. But overall, since they instituted the national security law, everything is now stabilized. In 2019, when people were protesting on the streets, I was actually afraid to walk onto the street. You know why? Because I speak Mandarin, and they were targeting every person that spoke Mandarin because they would assume that you come from the mainland. Uh, you know, well, I actually grew up in Taiwan, where I also, you know, they speak Mandarin there. And uh, so I actually felt physically threatened 
uh, with with uh, the, these uh, protesters, right? So I think now we have more stability. Hong Kong is going to be fine. You know why? Because it's free market economy. Uh, when you invest in Hong Kong, free flow of capital. You put money into the Hong Kong Stock Exchange today in uh, in Hong Kong dollars. Tomorrow you can take it out in U.S. dollars. There's a free flow of capital.